the circle of fifths. Most musicians are familiar with the circle of fifths, but I remember when I was first learning about it, I memorized it and then I was like, cool. I know what it is. Am I special now? Can I have my music degree? But what does it actually do? Well first, what is it? The most basic form of the circle of fifths is just all 12 pitches of the chromatic scale arranged in a circle or a clock face. When we move clockwise, we move a fifth with each step, and when we move counterclockwise, we move a fourth. And for a long time, that was my level of understanding of it. But what else is it good for? Why is this even worth memorizing? Well, probably the most common use for it for aspiring musicians and theorists alike is to use it as a memorization aid for their key signatures. C is at the top of the circle, and the key of C has no sharps or flats. Every time we move one direction or the other, we add a sharp or flat. When moving clockwise, we add one sharp to the key signature for every step we take away from C. G is one step away from C, and the key of G major has one sharp in the key signature. D is two steps away and has two sharps, etc., until we get to the center F sharp, which has six sharps in the key signature. The exact opposite is true for flats. As we move counterclockwise away from C, one flat is added. C starts with zero, then F has one, B flat has two, up to G flat, which has six. There are two other enharmonic keys that are typically shown on the circle. C flat major, which has seven flats, and and C sharp major, which has seven sharps. If you ever forget the order of sharps and flats to add to each key signature, that information can be found on the circle as well. For the order of sharps, start on the F and move stepwise up to six times. Each time you move a step, you'll get the answer on which sharp comes next in the order of sharps. Again, the opposite is true for flats. Start on B flat and move counterclockwise to find your order of flats. The circle can also help us memorize the minor key relationships. Some circles already have this built in, such as this one, but if not, we can find the answer on the basic circle as well. Moving three steps clockwise from any point will give you the relative minor key of your starting point. The relative minor key of F is D, and the relative minor key of A flat is F. Every interval and its inversion can also be found on the circle. Each interval is associated with a certain amount of steps in each direction. Starting from C, going clockwise one step equals a perfect fifth, two equals a major second, three equals a major sixth, four equals a major third, five equals a major seventh, and six equals a tritone. Going counterclockwise will give you the inversions of all of these intervals. One step equals a perfect fourth, two steps gives you a minor seventh, three steps gives you a minor third, four gives you a minor sixth, five gives you a half step, and six gives you a tritone. Draw a line from any one note to the note on the exact opposite end of the circle and find every interval possible within an octave on either side of that pole. Harmonic ideas can also be generated from the circle with ease. The circle shows us how each chord relates to each other. Chords that are close together on the circle are the ones that fit together best. Larger jumps are more jarring to the ears. And if we use the version of the circle with the relative minor keys included, we can also derive every major and minor chord in any key. Take your key center and the notes on either side, plus all of their relative minors, and you will get all of the major and minor chords in your key. For example, C has F and G on either side, and the relative minor of C is A minor. The relative minor of F is D minor, and the relative minor of G is E minor. All of the major and minor chords in C major are C, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor. The only chord that's missing is the diminished chord, which you can find by adding just one little bump to your shape. Modulations can be treated in the same way that chords can be on the circle. A modulation to a new key that is close by is going to be smoother and less jarring to the ears than one that is further away. The main reason for this is that the keys that are closest together have the most amount of notes in common. C major and F major have only one note that is different. The B natural becomes a B flat, whereas C and F sharp have only one note that is the same, the B natural. The circle also gives us a chance to visualize harmony in a unique way. Each chord has a specific shape that is made by connecting the notes of that chord. This shape can then be rotated to find every chord of that chord type. The four shapes shown here are major, minor, diminished, and augmented triads. Using this same idea, we can also visualize negative harmony, which I'd like to do a whole video on at some point. Essentially, negative harmony is flipping chords over an axis created between the tonic and the dominant of a key. In C major, this line would be here. This creates the effect of approaching a key center in a different way than it's normally heard. But the tension remains, and thus different chords serve the same function, just in a new way. 1, 5, 7, 1 looks like this on the circle and its negative equivalent looks like this. 
That negative equivalent was found by simply flipping the notes of the chord over the center axis. G becomes C, D becomes F, B becomes A flat, and F becomes D. You can rewrite entire chord progressions in this way to get some very cool results. I hope I've convinced you that the circle of fifths is more than just an interesting way to line up the notes. Thanks for watching. If you learned something or if you found this interesting, please consider leaving a like and subscribe.